Hi, I'm Mark Smith. I'm a sociologist. I am interested in studying online crowds. Online crowds seem very important to me. They change history, don't they? Uh, there's some data to find me for a guy named Smith. I'm easily Googled. Uh, I'll start by arguing that crowds matter. Uh, crowds here in the city uh, fill the streets. Uh, when crowds fill a public space, they can change history. Uh, and yet, where are the pictures of the cyber crowd? Uh, when we see people in front of a crowd, there's information in that crowd. And yet, when we see the tweet stream, what we see is something that would be like asking you all to line up single file. We lose the crowdness of the crowd when it happens online. And that is in part because we don't have a camera to take a picture of it. But we could build one. And that's what my organization, the Social Media Research Foundation, has been working on. Can we give away cameras that could take a picture of this crowd? That's the Obama crowd. Uh, this is what it looks like in social media. This is what that crowd looks like when we build a line between people when they reply or they mention one another. When they do, some structures emerge, some features of this crowd. Like, uh, could you believe it that there's division in political discussions in the United States? Uh, but there's the empirical evidence of it. It's there. I, of course, have helpfully cheated by putting the, the colors red and blue on it. But at the top of the boxes are the words most frequently used by the people in that cluster. And perhaps you could guess which side is which. So why don't we have more x-ray pictures of social media? Why can't we see the shape of the crowd? Well, there is social network theory, invented in part here at NYU. Social network theory for the last 90 years has been drawing networks of organizations, in some cases telling some important truths about the differences among those organizations. But the challenge has been that the tools are hard to use. Uh, any software developers in the room? Yeah, call me. Yeah, those guys are rare. Those, those men and women are hard to find. Uh, I'm not a developer, so I want something that's more like this. I, I want the point and shoot camera. I, I want something that's maybe more like this, the disposable point and shoot camera. Cheap, easy, put into the hands of lots of people. Maybe it's actually the uh, point and shoot digital camera, the device that I just noticed essentially has become extinct while we were not looking. Um, so what we really want is the app on your phone that you could take a picture of a crowd with, not just a physical crowd, a virtual crowd. And that looks like this. Uh, this is Node XL. You can download it from uh, nodexl.codeplex.com. It's free. It's open. And we hope that you'll take that camera and go take a picture of a crowd that matters to you. This is us, by the way. That's the PDF 15 crowd. And each dot is one of you. And each line is someone saying your name or you saying their name. And some structures emerge. Uh, we took this picture with Excel. It's a familiar environment. You've been in a spreadsheet before. Uh, that's what it looks like on a nice two-monitor system. Uh, what we hope you'll do with this tool is take a lot of pictures. There might be thousands of pictures. In fact, we now have 45,000 pictures in our Node Excel graph gallery, the Flickr for networks that we're building. Uh, so at the Social Media Research Foundation, we want you and scholars around the world to take pictures of the graphs that matter to you. And it looks kind of like this. Uh, you can go visit this right now at nodexlgraphgallery.org. And you'll find pictures of PDF 15 and of civic tech and of other scholars who I hope we'll see at the end of this deck, uh, many who are studying things like the democracy movements in Azerbaijan or looking at the peace movement in Colombia or looking at brands in our own country. Each of these maps leads to more data. It leads to more detail. It tells us who the mayor of these conversations is, not the person with the most followers, the person who sits at the center of the network using network theory. So here's PDF from a couple of days ago, our mayors. That would be Mika and then Civic Hall. And there's a list of the people at the center of this graph. And there on the other side, a list of the hashtags that are at the center of our community. But this was really Thursday night. This is early, and things then changed. Uh, there is this structure that's common in many of these. This is the broadcast hub. These are people who are tweeting, and lots of people are retweeting them. That happens a lot. But sometimes we get people who are isolated. Those are people who are aware of the brand, but not part of the conversation. A day later, 
we now have a lot of traffic, lots of people connecting to a lot of people. Uh, more of uh, our mayors, some of those people have changed. More of our topics, some of our cho topics have changed. New topics have emerged. But we can also see now that the density of connections has increased and what was just a broadcast is now a community. Where community is not a metaphor, it's not poetry, it's a threshold of your density score. It's how many connections do people have? If everybody is just connected to a hub, that's not a community, that's an audience. So different parts of your graph have different structures. We're looking for shapes in these graphs, shapes like a hub, and those are the broadcasters. Those are the people who create audiences around them. And that's exciting, but in many ways, audience is the first stage of social media success. Uh, the second stage is when your audience gets an audience, and the third stage is when a community emerges. We're also looking for the people who bridge the divides within these clusters. Many of us ended up within a group, only some of us actually connect across those groups. That's very important, particularly in politically divisive topics. Uh, and then there are the people who are islands, the people with no connections, who are not unimportant. They're the proof that you have public visibility. They are the indicator of brand. And so here we can actually see civic tech, a related topic of interest, and we can discover who are the mayors of civic tech. They're the people with betweenness centrality. They're at the middle of your graph. They're, again, not the heaviest tweeters. They're not the people who are with the most followers. They're the people who the rest of you talk to in a way that shows that they have importance. So all social networks, all, I'm sorry, all social media is like this. All social media is a network. Uh, it's not just Twitter. Uh, if people can connect to people, then they've created a graph. A graph is a really important thing because as we're leaving all this data behind us, what the data is inherently is in the form of ties, of links, of connections, associations, phone numbers that call phone numbers, emails that email email addresses, and so on. And so we want you to think link. We want you to start thinking about how things are connected to each other, sometimes reciprocated connections, sometimes not. We want to think about the ways that these connections can be in different magnitudes or flavors, because it's not a world of atoms. It's a world of molecules. And so if we could think about it, we would think about it in the form of edges. Edges are the unit of analysis of network people. An edge is two entities that have a connection. And so if you can create a spreadsheet that has two names, two phone numbers, two user IDs, you have created a network. And so we want to make that really easy. We want to make it so that if you could point a camera at a crowd and press a button and you'd get a picture of that crowd, and I think we are all somewhat expert at reading crowds, maybe we can learn to read the nature of different kinds of crowds that are out there that give us some insight into the nature of conversations that sometimes have this phrase, and things went crazy on Twitter or something went viral on social media. What does that look like? If a crowd formed in front of City Hall right now, and I said there's a massive crowd in front of City Hall, there would be a picture, there would be video, and we would learn a lot from the nature of that photo. Today, I can tell you that things went crazy in social media, and I get no pictures. And so I have no way of assessing, is that really true? Is that accurate? So social media network analysis really is the way to understand social media. It's the way to look at it as a connected structure. It allows us to see the shape of all of these conversations, and they're not all the same. They're not all broadcast networks. They're not all brand networks. In fact, what we've found over time and working with Pew Research is that there are about six basic shapes of networks. There are the six basic Twitter social media network graphs, the divided ones, the ones we're probably all interested in, uh, political polarization. But the good news is that it's not all polarization. There are lots of graphs that are just us chickens. It's lots of people talking to each other and they're all friends. Then there are the brand graphs. Nobody talks to anybody. Brand graphs that grow up. There is a little bit of communication and a lot of fragmentation. And then broadcast, the in and the out shape where sometimes there's the airline that's supporting people answering the question, where is my bag, why is my flight delayed? And then there is the broadcast hub, I tweet, you all retweet me. So that was described in the Pew Report. You can find it at pewinternet.org. Uh, and this is six real data sets. These are six real networks from Twitter that represent these six archetypes of type uh, of network structures. Uh, the divided structure, the just us chickens, it's a community, we're all friends. Uh, the fragmented brand structure, uh, the brand that grows up and gets some community alongside of it, uh, the broadcast structure, there's Mr. Krugman tweeting, and there's Dell trying to listen and trying to care. Uh, there is a book. 
Uh, and I'll just give a shout out to my fine quality co-authors. That's uh, Derek Hansen, professor of information science at Brigham Young University. And in the middle, that is Ben Schneiderman, professor of computer science at the University of Maryland. Uh, so what we do is we automate this. If it's hard to do, uh, you know, maybe you're a computer scientist, it's easy. But uh, if you can press a button, we'll do these five things for you and identify these structures in your social graph. We'll find out which of the six you are. And we'll note that there are now scholars around the world using the tool to identify the nature of social movements as they flow through social media. Uh, people at the University of Wisconsin who are studying uh, the Columbian peace process. Katie Pierce, a professor of communications at the University of Washington who is studying social movement use in Azerbaijan. Elena Pavan is studying the use of uh, well, movements to bring more women into the tech sector in Italy. Uh, Margaret Brig uh, Bjorn's daughter is actually discovering the uh, collusion that exists inside the Icelandic economy. The Icelanders gave the entire graph of who owns what to who to a bunch of researchers. They found a network. Professor uh, Klein at George Washington University is finding the network of Alexander the Great. And Scott Dempwolf at the University of Maryland is finding patterns of networks in patents. So lots of these kinds of research projects are now possible by people who are not programmers because the graph is the thing, it's true, but if you're not a software developer, it's hard to get to. It's now easy to get a graph and gain insights into these kinds of structures. And it's even easy to find the mayor of your hashtag and identify how to best talk to them, the people who believe in your movement. Uh, that's it as a flow diagram. So, uh, we encourage you to use networks to guide your effort to understand your point in that structure and to move beyond just having an audience all the way to building a community. Thank you.